Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life, and in this video I'm just going to show you how I made my 2x72 horizontal belt grinder. Now I've got a vertical KMG belt grinder, I love it, and for some of the other processes I do in my knives, I wanted to make a horizontal grinder. Uh, first of all, it allows me to get rid of my oscillating spindle sander, and that way also I can match up the belt, so when I'm you know, doing some inside radiuses and stuff like that, I can use the exact same belt and get the same finish as I do on the spine and other parts of the knife as well. So uh, when I was building this, the part that I didn't know how I was going to do it was the belt tensioning and tracking device. And I did a little research online, stared at some photos, and I couldn't find any really, really good clear pictures, but all of a sudden the light went on in my head and I thought, ah, that's how they're doing this. So the way this whole thing works is that on the tracking wheel, I've got that bar, and that is a piece of one inch by three quarter inch bar stock. And it is going to sandwich between two plates, and those plates are half inch by two inch, as well as there's a half inch by two inch plate that the whole thing will kind of rest on. And at the far end of the bar, which is the, the end I'm drilling right now, that is the pivot hole. And I'm just gonna use a 3 8 bolt for that, and obviously those holes will be going into the side plates as well. And that will create a pivot point for our uh, tracking mechanism. Just clean those holes up a little bit. And then now uh, I'm just cutting a couple of the bars that are just to go inside to hold the spacing when I weld it all up. But there you kind of see the idea of it. And uh, I actually put it on the bench in a minute here and I'll kind of explain it very clearly. But looking at a bunch of different designs, I went with this one. And now that I've used the grinder for a while, I'm really glad I did because this is quite a simple uh, little setup to build. There's nothing complicated about it, and it is incredibly effective, so I'm really, really happy that I went with this style of tensioner. And so that's kind of how it all mounts in there. I'm just going to clamp it out and put the bolts through, make sure it works like I would hope. And it actually works quite slick. That would be how you adjust it if there was a screw there. Now I'm going to measure out the bottom plate, and, and like I said, this whole thing, once it's all put together, it all becomes the tensioning device as well. And I'm going to drill a half inch hole there, and I'll bolt it to my table uh, that I'm making the grinder on with a half inch bolt, and that will be the main pivot point for the tensioner. I'll just mark some 45s here, kind of clean up that end so it's not a square piece of steel. Cut those in the bandsaw, and then I'll clean them up with my belt grinder. It's funny because when I was building this, I was amazed at how much I used my belt grinder. <laughs> I thought for a minute, you know, I'm pretty lucky to uh, be using a belt grinder to make another belt grinder. So I uh, kind of figured, ah, I felt really fortunate. I'm quite glad that I have the opportunity and the materials to make myself another grinder. And uh, it should come in really, really handy. Then we're going to weld this whole thing together. Just get our tack first. Once it's all tacked up, and then we'll weld it solid. And we'll clean it all up with a belt grinder. They're all looking good and smooth. Take away all the rough edges. And then when I was mocking it up, I didn't have the proper fasteners. I just kind of used whatever I had laying around. Um, when I do the final assembly of the project, I, I did go out and buy the, the right length of screws and stuff. So uh, just to mock it up, though, I kind of I was searching all over the shop, looking under under workbenches, you know, every nook and cranny, trying to find enough bolts that I could just mock it all together with. And now I'm just going to mark out where the uh, tracking adjustment screw is going to go. And I'm using a quarter 20 uh, bolt in there. And one thing I didn't show, but I drilled this out for the proper tap drill size. And then I also followed that through with a quarter inch bit. And I went about a, a quarter of an inch down. And what that does, it just gives you a nice little uh, tube, I guess, when you're starting your threads. It keeps your tap nice and straight. And if you've got a really thick piece like this, 
uh, and you've got room for lots of threads, it's kind of handy sometimes just to drill it drill it the proper size uh, for the outer diameter of your tap and that way your tap will start nice and straight. It's a really handy little trick. Alright so this is a little tracking mechanism uh, slash tensioning mechanism that I'm going to use and what I'm going to do is I'll have to put a mount here and I think I'm going to use just one of those gas shocks to keep tension on this. So. This will be a pivot right here. Again, this is just for mock-up. Um, I'll be swapping this out with a proper bolt as well as the proper knob. I'll either machine one with a nice knurled handle or also just buy one uh, from KMG. It's the exact same knob that's on my uh, KMG grinder. I want, I'd like to have the same style of knob on this one. So what you'll do is uh, this will obviously be fixed. This will be floating, but it'll have tension on it, which is where your belt tension will come. And so when you want to change belts, you're just going to simply loosen it off swap your belts and then let it go again so there's not going to be any adjustment like no bars that slide in and out for the setup that I'm using and then for your tracking it's simply a matter of lifting this wheel up and down and uh, this is temporary just using this little machine screw right now but just like this and that's a quarter inch 20 thread which is the same one on the KMG and it's a fine enough adjustment, but uh, I don't think you really need like a, a fine thread. This is just a quarter inch national coarse thread, so I think it should work pretty good. And that's pretty much the whole idea behind the tracking slash tensioning system on this unit. And then for the main base of the uh, grinder, I'm just using a piece of a half inch steel plate. And I decided to just do a mock up on some plywood just so I could kind of get the right size and uh, before I went to committing to a piece of steel. And so I cut that out, I was happy with it, and then I actually took it out to my dad's place and hacked up a chunk of welding table that I had laying around. And then I brought it back home and just cleaning up the edges with my bandsaw and grinding it all up, getting it nice and smooth. And that will become the main base that I'm going to build the grinder on. And next I just kind of start laying out all my wheels and all the different components. One of the reasons I went with a base type grinder rather than like a tubular frame is that it is so much simpler to just kind of be able to lay things wherever you want on the space and put holes and drill things and um, rather than having like a tubular frame where you've got to you know make sure you've got the, the right materials, right steel and framework going everywhere, you can just kind of lay everything out onto a piece of plate and and it works pretty good so again this is a half inch plate and this hole in drilling right now is for my main the drive wheel and there'll be a shaft going through there and I'll mount uh, some flange bearings on both sides and uh, that will be the main belt drive system and then obviously on the bottom side will be the pulley and it'll be a v-belt drive to the motor I'm using some reamers to uh, clean up those holes get them all the right size these reamers are really slick, they work well. And for my drive shaft there, I'm just using a three quarter inch shaft. So I've got that where I want it, and now I'll mark out my pillow block. Sorry, it's not a pillow block, a flange bearing. And uh, mark those holes and drill that. I cut a piece of uh, C-channel and I'm going to mount another pillow block on the bottom uh, just to space them out a little bit. So there I'm drilling that hole again. I'll mark those holes, I'll drill out for the, the bearing. And then once it's all said and done, we've got a set of holes that line up just like that and that will create a little bit of space and give that shaft some rigidity. And then I'm drilling out the pivot bolt, that's for the, it'll be a half inch threaded and that's where that whole carrier assembly will will bolt to for the uh, adjusting the belt uh, tension and the tracking mechanism. Now these here are tap sockets. I had some questions about these before. Uh, I bought these in the snap-on truck and they are so slick. Really really like those. bolt up our whole tension tracking assembly. And then I've got a shaft that just kind of hung through my drive wheel there just to hold it in place. 
And now we're kind of getting to the final layout and the small wheel attachment was the last last little item that I decided to to mount. And uh, well, I guess other than the gas shock and stuff, but just that way I can kind of play with it and get the exact geometry I want where my, I want my belt path to be. And uh, like I said, working on just a plate like this, it's a really, really slick way to go. And this is the bottom side where I'm tacking that piece of C-channel to, and I'll weld it up. So with the base of the whole grinder pretty much done, it's time to move on to getting some legs cut. Uh, two of the legs are inch and a half square tubing, and one of them was a two inch square tubing. And this was just some extra tubing I had laying around from another project, so... And I just went with three leg design because it's uh, tripods sit easier on a floor than four legs will. Um, usually if you have four legs it's nice to have some type of adjustment in there but with just three even if your floor is uneven or whatever uh, they'll usually sit pretty good anyways. So, And for this, uh, uh, this design uh, three legs is plenty. I was half tempted to do just a pedestal so a single support coming up uh, but that kind of created some issues with where my motor was going to mount so I went with a three leg design instead. And then once that's done, I'll cut some tubing for the motor. Uh, this will go between two of the legs, these two bars. And then I'll mark and drill the holes where the motor will bolt to. I get those offset to one side, kind of did a little layout where I wanted my motor to go. And then we'll drill those out and get them welded up. And then I, I had measured out and marked on the legs the height that I wanted these uh, these cross pieces to be. And uh, kind of ha have some bars clamped on the inside so that both edges are flush with the inside of the legs. And um, obviously there's a lot of mock-up that's not in the shot, but you know there's a lot of back and forth with my motor. And you can see I've got the pulley mounted on my, my drive shaft there. And I had some lines scribed where I wanted these bars to go. So just do that and weld it all up. And this is a little trick that I learned from watching the Jimmy Darista's videos. Um, I wanted some cross supports between there, but since I had different thicknesses of material for legs and obviously this cross material tubing is different than both of those uh, an easy way to lay out uh, say if you're coping the metal and you want a really nice tight fit is you just kind of lay it on top of there and spray paint it and it gives you a line to cut to and then once I cut those out with my bandsaw I've got a really uh, nice tight fit and uh, really snug very nicely coped uh, piece of steel makes for really great joints just measure those out, get them all even, and weld it up. So after I'd welded this up, I did mount my gas shock and the little tab on the tensioning device, but somehow I cannot find that footage. Um, the making of this video, I had over, I think it's 197 different video clips. So I apologize, I lost a few of them, but you can see the gas shock is mounted there. And uh, now that it's all looking like it's gonna work good, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tack weld a little electrical junction box to one of the legs there and that will be where I mount my switch. Uh, this isn't necessarily the proper way to do it but I'm in a rush so I just tack weld it on there. And then I'll wire up the motor, wire up the switch and I ran it on a really long piece of heavy heavy SO cable and uh, just 110 volt outlet. Uh, the motor I use is a 1 horsepower 110 volt. Alright, first try, let's see what she does. Well, she's spinning the right way. Okie dokie.
Now I'm cutting up some piece of one inch tubing to make a little riser for the work rest that I'm going to use around my small wheel attachment. And I decided to drill a couple holes in it and then I just tack welded some pins and I drilled holes in the table that were the exact same size as those pins. And um, so really it's just going to be here I'm transferring the, the holes to the plate. I'll drill those through and then put my pins in and kind of tack weld them onto there and I also welded them up from the inside and then all I did was I took my work rest that I'd made to go around the small wheels and I welded that plate to those uh, those piece of tubing and so what that ends up giving me is um, a really nice tight fit like you really got to yank it to get it out um, but it is removable if I have to switch out my wheels and stuff like that I just pull it out and stick it back and it doesn't vibrate it doesn't wiggle around I would like some type of uh, tool or work rest that would clamp in and out. Um, eventually I might get to that, but for now, you know, this works. And like I said, I could spend another week building this thing a little prettier, but mostly I just wanted to use it. So sort of shortcuts, mm, whatever. And then for this part, I, I did a platen, which is just a piece of angle iron there. And then I just tack weld those, those pieces of uh, tubing and welded a plate for the work rest for this part. And I'm going to get to something a little better in the future, but for right now, it works. Alright, so there she is. It's done. Um, pretty happy with how it turned out. Obviously at the very end there I was kind of getting impatient. I just wanted to get this up quick. I'm probably going to come up with some uh, different system. I might actually want to machine uh, a tool rest that has a few different angles. Um, just for different uh, ways that I put chamfers and bevels on some of the scales and stuff like that. So I might have one like a 40 degree, a 45 degree, a 30 degree, and then a flat uh, rest right here. So for now, I've just very quickly just tacked it on there and I can just grind those off and bust this off if I want to. Um, this system works pretty good, uh, just with pins. It's a really nice tight fit. I'm sure that'll loosen up a little bit in time, but um, I can uh, maybe need to grind this down a little bit because I I made this before I put uh, this flat platen on here, so I might need to adjust that. But for this belt, it's working fine; it's not rubbing. And um, yeah, obviously, right now outside it is too cold to paint. Now, I mean, we're barely getting up to the freezing mark during the day. Um, so probably in the spring, I'll paint this, and then also I might end up putting some shrouding in here. Um, got a piece of checker plate I might put in here just to keep dust out of this area and also you know just nice not to have that exposed uh, the belt but so far I think that is pretty much it um, I, I'm still you know once I use it for a while I'm sure I'm gonna find a few things I'd like to change and tweak um, looking back uh, I kind of wish that I didn't have these legs right in the way. Maybe it'd be nice to kind of cut this main table down a bit and then put tubes and pipes so that I could actually put the rest on the pipes and they could slide them in and out. Um, but for now, I can change out wheels, belts, everything without taking this off. And, and like I said, this is just a friction fit with those pins in there. So I just pop that out and I'm good to go. Um, when I'm using the really, really small wheel, like the quarter inch wheel, uh, there's not quite enough tension on here. So I am going to re-tap this hole, probably move it over maybe an inch and retap and that should just give me enough tension it the belt stays and it, it tracks a bit when it's running but as soon as you put any pressure on it just slips and there's not enough tension on the drive wheel to keep it going so I do have to change that and modify that and then one other thing I'll do is um I've got my little knob coming it's actually gonna be the exact same one as on this grinder I'm gonna order it from KMG uh, from Beaumont Metalworks. Unfortunately, they don't ship to Canada, so I'm gonna ship it down to my parents' place in Phoenix and they'll bring it here for me, so I'll have that in a couple weeks. Uh, for now, I'll just use this. And then I'm thinking I might do some type of a handle on here, maybe something that just kinda comes up like this and maybe mount like a pool ball or something like that. Um, just so I can grab it easy, but this actually works just fine. Maybe, maybe I won't get around to that, I'm not sure. 
So there you have it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. A little look at building a uh, horizontal 2x72 belt grinder. Cheers.